Hi, I'm your host, Didi Che. Audio Builders TV presents Why Guitar Players Should Care About Electronics. This is a multi-part series presented by John Snyder. John is a PhD student at Boston University and is the owner and chief engineer of Electronic Audio Experiments, a small batch manufacturer of stomp boxes and tube amps. Audio Builders TV is produced by the students of Concord Carlisle High School with help from Colonial Sound and CCTV. Please subscribe to us on YouTube and sign up for our mailing list at audiobuildersworkshop.com. <laughs> Audio Builders. Hi everyone, I'm John Snyder from Electronic Audio Experiments, and in this segment we're going to be talking about all the electronics concepts that make playing guitar more worthwhile. Uh, so in our last segment, we talked about Ohm's law, the relationship between voltage, current, and resistance. Uh, since resistors are an element that we can pick and choose and build circuits out of, uh, there's a whole lot of things that we can do in order to get what we want. Uh, when you're building a network, and this applies to any sort of electronic components, even at the systems level when you're talking about things like amplifiers and stomp boxes, uh, we have series and parallel uh, as our two main ways of forming connections. A series connection is just stuff in a line. And you can see in the top diagram, just a row of resistors just connected end to end. Uh, resistors in series are going to add up. So if you just have three resistors, it's just gonna be R1 plus R2 plus R3. You can also have a parallel connection. The way to identify a parallel connection is if current can take more than one path. As you can see, if you're coming in from the left side, the current can go through R1, R2, or R3 and is shared between the three of them in some way, shape, or form. The actual resistance of this network is a little bit more complicated, but you can see the equation here. Something to keep in mind, especially if you're talking about something like a guitar cabinet, is that the speakers may be wired in series and or parallel at the same time in order to get a desired load resistance. For example, two 8-ohm speakers connected in series will be 16 ohms. Two 8-ohm speakers connected in parallel will be 4 ohms. And as you can see, there are more combinations to be had. Another common configuration using resistors is something we call a voltage divider. If you have two resistors taken together with a voltage source, and then you measure the voltage at the midpoint between those two resistors, you're going to get a new voltage given by the equation here. V out is equal to R1 over R2 plus R1 times V in. As you can see, uh, the relationship between R1 and R2 is going to scale V in to be smaller than V out. One special case is if these are equal. If R1 and R2 are the same value, then V out is equal to half of V in. This circuit is something similar to what you'd see in a passive volume control, like on a stereo. When you turn the knob, the ratio of R1 to R2 is going to change, and thus your output voltage, or the output signal strength, is going to change as well. We're going to see this in a whole lot of other places too. Power supplies, and the relationship between a source and a load in a bigger system. And that's what we're going to talk about next. So here we have a Fender Super Reverb combo. Uh, we have a source, which is an amplifier, and we have a load, which is a speaker. The source can be modeled as a voltage source, and the, the, the load can be modeled as uh, resistance. Inside the source, we've got a whole lot going on. Uh, we have tubes, transformers, resistors, capacitors. Analyzing a tu tube amp can take days to do properly. Needless to say, it's pretty complicated. But we can model it in this way. So we have our source voltage, and then we have the source resistance. Any real source is going to have a resistance as part of its model in order to show you how much current can really come out of it. Again, V equals IR. This, that way, if you have a power supply that's rated at something like one amp, that source resistance comes from that. If you draw more than one amp, you're going to lose power. Uh, you won't be able to provide what it says on the box, essentially. So in this system, we have V source being the amplifier, R source representing how much you can get out of the amplifier, and R load being your speaker. In order to maximize the power transfer, which you want for a guitar amp, the source and load should be as equal as possible. Therefore, if you've got an 8 ohm speaker, you want to plug it into the 8 ohm transformer jack for the source and load to match with one another. Now in a different system, for example, if you're connecting a guitar to an amplifier, uh, you want the, the voltage to be as high as possible, not the power. For the voltage to be as high as possible, you want our source to be much smaller than our load. The output impedance of a guitar is pretty high, hundreds of kilo ohms usually. 
The input of a tube amplifier, on the other hand, is mega ohms, millions of ohms. Now, this works very well in practice, but sometimes a cable can introduce an extra load, and that's why you often see buffered bypass in something like an effects pedal, or even a standalone buffer. So, when you're building a system out of guitar, uh, a guitar, guitar equipment, you really want to keep in mind your source and your load impedances and how those resistances are going to work together. Thanks for watching Audio Builders Television. I'm John Snyder.